My name is Joe Hinkle. This training video is how to set up for a smart long range SPY 4 receiver on the Hingspix Pro controller. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen is the web page configuration. If you go to output settings, the very first board associated with the Hingspix Pro is a long range receiver which occupies ports 1 through 16 and that's what you see here. There are four blocks as identified that for all 16 ports you'll see that they're grouped in ports of four. That's associated with each of the four CAT5 cables that come out of the long range transmitter board. There's port 1 through 4. You identify here, just as if you were doing a spy board, the start channel that is within the Hingspix Pro that contains the pixel data you're looking for and the number of pixels that are on this particular data stream. Now I'm going to use the word data stream to identify the transmission in this example of 680 pixels that are coming down the uh, port 1 data stream for the first CAT5 cable. And this would be data stream 2, data stream 3, data stream 4. You'll see why I'm using the word data stream in just a minute. Another terminology, I'm going to use the word port. Port, I'm using to specify the Euro connector, the green Euro connector, that you're physically going to attach a pixel string to. So on a, if you were just using a dumb long-range receiver, at the end of the CAT5, you would have four Euro connectors labeled 1 through 4 that would be associated with streams 1 through 4 on that CAT5. When we go into smart long-range technology, the Hingspix Pro has the ability to address up to 16 long-range receiver boards on any one CAT5 cable. So we can have 16 individual long-range boards on this group, on this group, etc. The way you implement and tell the Hingspix Pro that you have a smart receiver is by clicking the plus. If you've noticed, it now brings up a submatrix and it says board ID. Your board ID is anywhere between 1 and 15 and that physically identifies that board that's attached to the data streams on this CAT5 cable. The outputs are here, port 1, 2, 3, and 4. These are the physical spy ports that you would connect a, a uh, pixel string to. Now here you identify the type of long range receiver board you have. In this case it's a smart four port spy for pixels. You also have a smart 16 port spy for pixels. You have a 16 AC output and you have a 64 by 64 uh, matrix panel. This training video strictly is here to support a four port spy uh, pixel output. With zeros in the start pixel that means that this board will not have any outputs on its spy. You must give it a start channel for it to start providing pixel data out that particular port. So in this example let's say that we're going to utilize all four ports and we want the very first pixel here, the very first pixel here, very first pixel on, on stream 3 and the very first pixel on stream 4 to come out the spy ports. We would simply do a 1, 
a one, a one, and a one. What that tells the board is the very first pixel that's coming down this stream, it's to direct it out this particular um, smart receiver board. Let's add another board. We'll give this one an ID. We'll just give it an ID of three. But on this particular board, we're only going to use output two. And we want that to start at pixel 100. Here, it tells you what the switch position is. Here, it's all down. So here, it would be up, up, down, down. That's telling you the switch position on the, um, on the board itself. And you can keep going here, and you can add up to 16 boards. Uh, the software is going to check to make sure that each of these are unique. So let's, we click on the red, and we can remove that particular one. Now, each of the smart boards have a CPU that has firmware on that CPU. The smart boards are field upgradable. In order for you to identify whether a smart receiver board needs to have its firmware updated, you can identify what the current firmware is on the board. You do that by pressing this. By pressing this, the Hinxpix Pro is now commanding all smart boards that are on this particular Cat5 cable to go ahead and start uh, identifying its firmware. And it does that by blinking the pixels that are attached to its output port. There, the firmware versions always have two numbers. The initial release out of manufacturing currently is 1-1. One, one. So white comes up and will blink the number of times for the very first number, which would be 1. It'll pause. It'll blink red to identify the number associated with the second digit. It'll pause. It'll go green for about three seconds to identify the end of the version lighting transmission. It'll go black, and then it'll start all over again. And it'll sit there and repeat that until you terminate it, and you turn it off. And it's that way so that you can go ahead and start the boards identifying their version number and go out and look out the window or open up the door and go out and see exactly what versions are being um, identified. So again, in summary, uh, you identify your smart receiver boards and adding boards by clicking on the plus sign. You identify a board ID uniquely within this set between 0 and 15. You identify any port that is going to be active, and if it is active, what the very first pixel on that data stream is that should be output through that port. That concludes this training on Hingspix Pro Long Range Smart Receiver Configuration. Have a great day.